This video is essentially a Borealis appreciation post. Do me a favor, if you're a sniper in Destiny 2 PvP, in your next gaming session, give it 3-4 to four games. Just try it. The worst that can happen is you don't gel with it and it goes right back in your vault. But, I have a good feeling that if you really give it a fair shake, and you never have before, you might just like it. The beautiful part is that Borealis is an exotic sniper rifle, it keeps going and going with the cap. Now, unless Bungie specifically goes out of their way to nerf Borealis, then nothing's gonna happen aside from a wide, universal, aggressive frame change to sniper rifles. And for some reason, Borealis has no street cred. I have no idea why, but let's talk about why it should be considered. There's a huge thing that goes really unnoticed, and there are various reasons why I do recommend Borealis. I'm gonna show you how to set it up, how I like to run it, and give reminders about it. But I do see a few reasons why it doesn't get any play. We'll get into those in a moment, but let's just first talk about Borealis. This is from Mercules from the Massive Breakdown podcast. He's also on our DCP Firing Range podcast that we do every other Wednesday. He's a legend in the Destiny community. There's a link down below to the spreadsheet. And go follow him on Twitter. Check out his stuff. He's a great follow. What we see here is that aside from range, it absolutely crushes every stat category when compared to the rest of them. The most stability, handling, reload, aim assist, and some stats like handling and stability are pretty much double of the next best aggressive frame legendary. It's a monster. And low key, that aim assist and extremely high 78 handling stat is the bread and butter. When you compare it as a hard hitting aggressive to the next frame, the adaptives, what we see is that the range stat and the aim assist stat are going to be more in line, but every other stat is crushed. 15, 20, sometimes 30 more stat points in a category. Let's go even further, the rapid fire frames. Now we start seeing that the reload and handling is in line with each other, but all the other stats are going to get crushed by Borealis. So all in all here, Borealis, where it closely aligns, it has the handling and reload speed of a rapid fire frame, the range and aim assist of an adaptive frame. It has the best ability out of any sniper rifle in the game aside from Darcy, which is a heavy weapon, and all the while it's doing aggressive frame damage, and on top of that, it does have the best handling, reload, and stability of any sniper rifle. All of them. It is a monster. Let's put respect on it. It's got a 45 zoom stat, excellent handling, and changes are coming to that. With Beyond Light, they've adjusted how aim assist is affected by sniper rifle zoom, lower level zooms have less aim assist, higher zoom scopes have more, and scopes with around 50 zoom are unchanged. Lowest zoom options, again, a large reduction in the aim assist cone angle, and the highest zoom scopes have a small increase, and that 50 is unchanged. This one sits at 45, and when we talk about low zoom scopes, getting that large aim assist reduction, we think of 35 zoom, Revoker, Twilight Oath, then there's 40 zoom, Omniscient Eye, Supremacy Beloved. Working up into 45, that's going to be Darcy, and this one, and then we have 50 zoom that's unchanged. And we would think that these penalties are going to be universal, so putting on a scope that is X amount gives X amount reduction to aim assist or increase. Bite of the Fox, Trophy Hunter. These aggressive frames collectively have the lowest aim assist of all sniper rifles. Bites at 41 aim assist. So these having 43, 45 zoom levels are getting reduced aim assist stats starting in the 40s. Meanwhile, Borealis is starting from 65. It's set up for the nerf. It's set up to be viable. And also consider that all these snipers that we've gotten recently, or ones that have been reintroduced, are at 45 zoom. Eye of Soul, the Ikelos, Widow's Bite. In conclusion, Borealis is jacked. The stats alone on Borealis are enough for me because it translates in-game. You really feel it. It's kind of like the first time you picked up an Ostringer. An Ostringer is to hand cannons as Borealis is to sniper rifles. Just beefy high base stats. On some sniper rifle frames, you're going to be able to add on a barrel or a mag to match the Borealis, but you aren't going to fully all around on every single stat beat it. But let's start talking about some downsides, or potential downsides. Borealis walks a slippery slope. With just the right change, it would be overpowered. And I want to make it clear what Borealis does for you in the Crucible. I love it, and I want you to be aware of it. And to some, it's a small thing. And guaranteed, most players don't even notice. It's always working, and it does come in clutch. Its exotic perk is Ionic Return. Breaking an enemy shield transfers one bullet from reserves, breaking a combatant shield or shield of a guardian using a super with the same energy type grants bonus damage for the rest of the magazine. Okay, PvP wise, this is amazing if you're a sniper. And with the look of it, because of the crucible, because of PvP, I don't think Borealis can shine in PvE, unfortunately. It's in a weird spot, like I said, a slippery slope. The first part is the main one and it goes completely unnoticed. Breaking an enemy's shield transfers one bullet from reserves, or shield of a guardian using a super. A lot of people think that a player has to be in a super for that first part to work. No. There are two separate things going on, and I'm just unsure if it's just coded like this, but here's how that translates in-game. 
This is an aggressive frame sniper. It does 158 to the body. Any non-super guardian that you deal damage to, it's gonna be 158 to the body, or if you just land the headshot, obviously they're gonna be down. But the 158 breaks enemy shields, meaning literally every single sniper shot that you hit, it could be head or the body, one bullet from reserves is going back into the magazine. So if you start with two rounds off of spawn, pick up a brick at any point, and you don't reload, the moment that you land a shot on a regular enemy, a bullet from the reserve, is chambering back in. I remember not too long ago, there was a lot of people saying that Revokers should give bullets from reserves when you land headshots. It's Borealis. It's been Borealis all along. Borealis does this. Like right here, I start off spawn with two rounds, I land a headshot, there's a brick next to me, and I rush to go get it. There's no time to reload after I get headshots. And again, these could have been body shots, but it's chambering rounds from reserves every single time I land a shot. There was a lot of enemies next to me. I didn't have time to reload. This is where it shines. On top of it just being a stat monster. A lot of this gameplay, when I went back and looked at it, I just want to make it clear what's really going on with Borealis, because this is happening all the time. So long story short, any snipe shot to the head or the body, it's going to refill a bullet from the reserves. And here's where it gets interesting, because in PvE, this is somewhat lame, because you need to break a shield from a PvE enemy. That means you would have to find a shield from a PvE enemy, and when you do, it's just one bullet that comes back after you do that. An overall buff would be for Borealis to be updated with Genesis. Because right now, when you break a shield, only one bullet comes back. With Genesis, when you break a shield, the entire magazine would refill. And when you match elements, it regenerates ammo. After you match the shields, that full magazine would be the bonus damage from the second part of the perk. You would just get a full refresh, then actually start using the damage. But... If you were to ever match a shield in the Crucible, and here are clips of that happening, it does happen, and it needs to be two body shots or a headshot on a super, you start getting the bonus damage from Ionic Return. It does 182 to the body. That bonus damage is 15% more. This cannot one-shot body shot. It used to be able to, but imagine what I showed you with it giving a bullet back every single time you just land a shot because you're breaking a shield. If you were able to get Ionic Return active, all you would have to do is have at least one bullet in the magazine with Ionic Return on your screen. Just pick up reserves off of the ground, and every time that you one-shot body someone, it would just keep refilling that round. Not to mention, say you start off with a full magazine of Ionic Return with five. Just every time that you body shot someone, you would just keep extending the magazine from reserves that you see on the ground. It would just be endless body shots. Like I said, it walks a fine line, and if they wanted to buff the damage for a one-shot body, the damage would need to go from 15% to 21%. And as I started working through this and breaking it down, if they did add Genesis, if they did add more damage to Ionic Return from matching damage when you break a shield, it would be a great PvE sniper. It really would, but as it stands, it's set up for the Crucible because of how breaking shields always is going to give you that bullet back. Now the PvP occurrence of getting the damage part is actually kind of rare. Because you have to think, you have to know a super is coming, you have to have enough time to change to the actual element, which by the way, you just hold reload to change elements, kind of like hard light. And small note, hopefully they update it to have stasis. But as far as one shot body shots go, you get way more from high energy fire with charge with light. Opposed to how many times you can, again, find a super, match the shield, then break it. Then because of the crucible, you might not even have a full magazine, or after you break it, it might be off spawn, so you only have one round, or whatever it is. High Energy Fire does 189 and downs low resilience. If you have Ionic Return and High Energy Fire, it's going to be a sure thing. One shot, body shot. So it could be seen as a downside that the little extra damage that you get from matching a shield doesn't one shot body. And a lot of people don't like that, but it's the first part. It's the bullet return that stands out. That's what people should be paying attention to. It's great. Now, one downside is that it can't be modded with Icarus or Target or in PvE for a boss spec and so on. That's why I suggest a possible buff to its damage in PvE for the perk. But another potential downside is just it's simply being an exotic. Exotic usage depends on how good the pairing weapon is. Back when 600s were starting out, you saw Hard Light Sniper, Suro Sniper. We've seen Thorn Sniper, Last Word Sniper. They all work. You're going to need to pair Borealis with a Legendary that is well rolled could be a pulse, a hand cannon, an AR, there will be good pairings. But would Borealis be better than just a legendary sniper that you have in your vault or that you're going to find in Beyond Light? I think yeah, it could be because when push comes to shove, your main goal as a sniper is to hit someone in the face. You could have quick draw moving target, you could have snapshot vorpal, snapshot opening shot, whatever it is. There's a number of roles, but in the end, you just need to hit someone in the face and you need to feel comfortable doing it. It doesn't matter what the sniper is, it doesn't matter what the role is, snipers are all about feel, it's something that you gel with. 
and Borealis stands tall with those stats, one of them being handling it in all of this gameplay. I have on Enhanced Sniper Rifle Targeting. That mod grants target acquisition accuracy and why we're mainly using it is for aim down sight speed. It's to get it fast. It's to pair with that high handling stat. And remember with Beyond Light, all mods that have an enhanced version of that mod have had the base efficacy increased to match that of the enhanced version. So as a result, enhanced mods have been depreciated and all the base mods have been adjusted upward slightly, but are still lower than the equivalent enhanced mod. Some of the mods have moved to different slots, different sockets, but the main thing is that the base targeting efficacy has increased to match somewhat of the enhanced version. That's a good thing. It's not going to cost six energy. So one more time, you know what you're going to get out of it every single time that you place it in your loadout, even with the downsides. And that's something that you're going to have to weigh. Obviously, if a sniper or a thorn sniper is a thing and you love those hand cannons, then do it. But this thing feels great in your hands. It is above the rest. It's an aggressive frame with adaptive and rapid fire frame stats at one shot supers. It has good zoom. Every single time that you land a bullet, it chambers one from the reserves. It has everything that you need if you're a sniper. So if you love to snipe, put on a targeting mod, enhance it if you have it, try it out for three or four games for me in your next play session. The worst thing that's going to happen is that you're going to vault it. No problem. However, it could become your new favorite thing. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. The channel memberships are live. There are a couple things with that. I do post to the community tab where the only the members can see it, give updates on what I'm doing and get some ideas from you guys of what you'd like to see. If you're looking for a new controller, I am partnered with Scuff Gaming. There's a link down below. You can use my code COOL at checkout for a discount. Let's talk about Borealis and snipers going forward. Thank you for watching. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy.